Oh, oh my goodness. Another day. Another another wonderful day. Another Wednesday here at Primordic Studios for another episode of Renegades Ramble. Hello, everybody. My name is Nathan Hamilton. I am, uh, huh. oh, God. Another day, another day older and deeper in debt. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. But, uh, yeah, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this uh, this uh, podcast actually is taking place after a very very tragic event. I figured, you know, it's the biggest news story in the world, um, and also it affects me very much because I was a very big fan. Um, Kobe Bryant, a uh, former Los Angeles Laker, winner of five uh, world championships, also uh, also um, one of the most prolific scorers one of the most uh, like amazing individuals ever to set foot on the basketball court and also from what a lot of people have said a very humble person very humble and very like genuine person uh oh oh <laughs> we're trying out the we're trying out Jake's camera again on the uh, you know on the as the main camera so if you're able to make us out a lot easier uh, it's because of him uh, <laughs> so yeah um, needless to say, uh, Kobe was a uh, was a very 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 prolific person and had uh, had you know a lot of fans. Uh, I'm not saying I was the biggest fan, um, but I, I will say that I loved to watch him play because honestly he impressed the hell out of me. Because I played basketball when I was growing up. Of course, one of my heroes when I was a kid was Michael Jordan. But after Michael retired. Um, you know, I, I, you know, floated around like Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Garnett, uh, but the one I always came back to to watch highlights of uh, before LeBron James, you know, and like in the uh, throughout the 2000s, uh, was uh, was Kobe Bryant, and seeing Kobe Bryant and LeBron James play against each other is honestly like some of the best basketball you will ever see, and um, the fact that not only him but his young daughter. Uh, Gianna has gone at 13, as long as with seven other individuals. Uh, it's it's heartbreaking, man. It really is. It is heartbreaking, and to see you know, to see the world come together and like celebrate Kobe Bryant, the basketball world, the sports world. Period. Um, it's it just shows you to know sports fans aren't just a bunch of meatheads. I heard there's a petition to actually like. Put Kobe on the NBA logo or something. Now? Uh, there is, uh, and if he is to replace Jerry West, I would not be. I would not be against it because number one, Jerry West uh, was also a Los Angeles Laker, and uh, also I think Jerry West would be a hundred percent for that because Jerry West was a huge reason why Kobe Bryant signed with the Los Angeles Lakers. Hmm. Uh, Jerry West, for those of you not know, he is the NBA logo. He is the dude dribbling the basketball. And if you want to replace, if there's a worthy person to replace him on the NBA logo, I can't think of anyone better than Kobe Bryant. I think I last saw it had like a 1.1 million signatories or something like that. Like yes, business. which, which you know, if it passes and, you know, the NBA is just like, for this as a tribute. Plus, he didn't even get a chance to like get into the Hall of Fame. He was due to be elected into the Hall of Fame. Well, he hasn't been voted on, but I guarantee you, like he was, he was a first ballot. First, he was a first ballot. You know, before this whole thing happened. Now that this, he'll be unanimous. Hmm. He will be una- like one of the few unanimous votes into the NBA Hall of Fame, and um, also, uh, also. Uh, <laughs> To me, he's like he's easily a top five. He's 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 probably my my shooting guard. If I had to pick like an all time team, he's probably my shooting guard, just because of how quick he was. But yeah, um, it was always tradition to say Kobe every time you did a three point yeah, shot on the back, I, backyard. <laughs> I actually saw I actually saw a yeah. video of some YouTubers playing uh, playing like Call of Duty, and. Um, they one of them yell like this is they they released the video the day of the incident and I watched it after I'd seen the whole Kobe Bryant thing uh, and I heard them say it and I'm like that's gonna have a whole lot more meaning whole different now. meaning now yeah it's gonna be a lot more like a lot more depth to the you know d- deep thinking whenever it comes to people saying that and uh, yeah it. <laughs> I uh, you know I, I really wish that you know Kobe could have made it to his Hall of Fame ceremony, but life is full of surprises, some good, some bad, and like it or not, we all have to move on and we all have to keep going and moving forward. And 
you know just know that hey don't be sad that don't be sad all you know, don't be sad for too long that he's gone just be happy that it happened just be happy that his career happened and he excelled to the level that he did and yeah so, uh, speaking of moving forward, yeah, what's yeah. big plans for 2020? Well, 2020, uh, a few things happening. Uh, number one, we are going to uh, start doing more short films. Uh, for those of you out there who saw our Nerf This short film, uh, which was uh, directed, written, and done by this man over here. Slapped together. Well, it was a school project of his, and he felt confident enough in it to where he wanted to put it on the channel and see how it would do. And the reception for it was actually really good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, got more positive feedback than I imagined. For it. And so yeah, figured we had, if we start doing these every now and then, and it'd be kind of interesting to see our audience um, see us, because <laughs> you know we'll always be probably cameoing in a lot of scenes and stuff well yeah kind of and, and i and i'd like to do more i'd like to do more stuff like that Plus, I, I like to see, I, like, I like to see nick and nathan act it's kind of entertaining <laughs> but i i try i try my best um but yeah i i, I would love to I I so <laughs> no dude you took the fall from that balcony like a champ <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's like all right nick we need you to land face first on the hardwood floor you ready i don't know about this okay we figured that you nate sure push him exactly. what? he nailed it ah! he nailed it in one take yes he did he, only he didn't one. get back up after that take <laughs> <laughs> it's I, like, I did act in the other thing that hasn't been released still oh yeah about that. Uh, that's right you guys still working on the uh remnant uh, remnants. Uh, that's mm-hmm. actually right now. Um, uh, that's more on the back burner now. Uh, it's not like I, I still have it, and I'm still talking <laughs> with Wyndham and getting stuff finished and everything. But for now, given the time, given like basically, uh, you, you start taking projects and you start juggling them, right. and, <laughs> and whichever one lands and it, like. Which, Oh, there yeah. first no, it happens sometimes. Which, yeah. The one that we're working on right now is actually one that um, that um, it was originally uh, like part of it was Nick, like the vast majority of it was Nick's idea to do it, and uh, I came up with like a prelude to the idea, mm-hmm. and we're going to be doing the short film idea that uh, you know uh, that uh, yeah, we, we actually storyboarded we it. We won't say what it is. Night. We can't. We can't, we can't really say what it is. But so we pretty much got <laughs> script done. Script's locked in. Storyboard shot list are pretty much done. Um, locations are almost secured. Got to get those secured, and mm-hmm. then pretty much just a budget for props and costumes and actors, and pretty much set the date, and then we're ready to roll. Yeah, uh, and, and I and I was surprised how quickly it came together because uh, whenever whenever Nick told me what he wanted to do, I immediately was just like, "Ooh, okay, let's see how can we because." What he wants to do is something that it it's the concept is absolute the concept is awesome, mm-hmm. uh, and um, you know I just uh, whenever he told me how he wanted to proceed about it, I thought about how we could write characters that could go in this and be you know we can emotionally like you know can, we we can have it to where these characters are human beings and we can right. actually relate to them given the given the scenario and everything and so far you know uh nick uh, you know a few things have come up to where there's been points of like con you know contention and like ha- and like my choice of how i word stuff and everything in my scripts right. uh it but outside of that it's been nothing but positive and you know there's there I'm always open to crit- criticism. I'm always open to people telling me what's wrong and you know and how we can improve it. That's one thing I'm not afraid to admit. I'm not perfect. Never have been. Never will be. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's happening. And also, uh, we're also continuing to do more stuff with Micah. Uh, we actually had a uh, bow and arrow video planned, uh, sort of similar to our tomahawk throwing video. And unfortunately, um, the gods were not with us that day. <laughs> well, number one, the weather was not our friend because uh, we were actually having pretty decent weather about a couple weeks Until ago. Until Thor started striking his anvil, and then Odin's tears rained from the sky. Well, yes, and also, and also, uh, uh, what's the, uh, and also the, uh, uh, the out of his warm Ragnarok. Helheim. Oh Ragnarok no, Ragnarok was upon you. Yeah, Ragnarok was upon us. The winters started sen- settling in, and Fimble winter had begun. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so overall, though, 
uh, it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, but it, it was a lot of fun planning it out. Uh, and I also got all these targets and everything, and we we'll were still do it. Well, we'll we will. It. And I told I told Zach. Zach was actually the was the main component behind it because he got this new uh, he's he got this new like uh, bow, uh, and he'd been and he's an ace with it. I've seen him shoot it from various distances, and he is a friggin' a ace. Bow, that's well, that's what he has. His is okay. yeah, and he his has like a like a fifty pound pull on it, and he. Uh, I'm trying to think what mine is. I think mine is like a seventy. Well, good lord. Well, are you trying to kill a bear? <laughs> no, it's how it was set. Yeah. Well, yeah. how Zach, how Zach has his uh, set up is he does his, uh, he's got the little uh, finger trigger thing instead of it, you know, like like releasing, like plucking the string. Yeah. Instead, it's like a, a compound release, and you, you just hit the little, like, like finger, like a trigger, and then it'll oh. just clean release every yeah, time. Yeah, that, that, that always makes it, because when, you know, the whole act of, like, moving your finger out of the way the string mm. causes instability. I always yeah. related it. It's like firearms. Your trigger pull is very important on right. not pulling your shot. So it's the same thing with a bow. It's the, very the, good. the bow that I'm, I'm talking about, I've had it since, I think, since I was high school because uh, back when, when I was high school, me and my friends did some dumb shit with it. Basically, I, I found this fun activity to do where I took the arrow, just took the, the hard tip off, the, the sharp point, and wrapped it in like newspaper and uh, fucking electrical tape. And then I would like just shoot it up and like shoot it vertically, and we'd play a game of like oh, dodge the no. dodge the fall. Kind of like Adam Sandler, and then when they yeah. shoot the arrow, I mean, it, it, lands it, on it, foot. You know, it was one of those things. Where oh! like, there's no there's no tip on it really, but it's, it's still gonna it's hurt. Gonna, it's, oh, gonna it's, gonna, like, it's gonna feel like a paintball if it hits you. Yeah, you know, it's not gonna. Feel good. But it, you know, and and so I was we were doing it you know all the time, shooting it vertical and stuff. And then my buddy drives it for the first time. And he aims it like at a forty-five degree angle. And then we're in a neighborhood, so oh no, no, you know, uh, you know you get through somebody's window. Uh, you're gonna have to go higher, buddy. He goes up a little bit higher, but he didn't go anywhere near. No, it needs to be like and straight releases up. releases before I tell him, you know, no, straight up. And he releases, and it goes over the tree line into the next neighborhood, and I guess apparently fell close to somebody that was doing gardening or whatever. And like, oh, that's when everybody runs. And, yeah. All right, let's get our yeah. let's get our story so, straight. Nate did it. <laughs> right. What? Okay. Uh, Sarah, uh, uh, to ca- uh, talk about someone in the context. Sarah Williamson. Um, I saw your comment asking why we don't react to Doug Walker's videos anymore. Here's a funny story. Uh, let me tell you. Uh, Mike and I actually did react to a Doug Walker video. Uh, his Star Wars video. Uh, the one where he talks about the prequels and the uh, sequel, the sequel trilogy, uh, and you know what one has that the other does not. And um, anyway, uh, while we were recording that, we were. This was the same day that the weather was like fuck yourself. Yeah, uh, it was actually. Uh, we were sitting there, we were talking, and uh, I look up and I noticed that the lights started flickering, and I was like, "Huh, that usually that's not good. Maybe I should stop the recording." Nah, and as soon as I take my hand off the mouse, boop, power goes out. And it's just like, <laughs> as soon as that happened, I realized oh. the file was be corrupt. Oh, I wouldn't be able to save it. That, done. Whenever and I couldn't happens, do nothing. Whenever that shit happens, oh, like, I, I am like... Well, hauling ass to the save button. No, and that, well, and I should have. I should have because we were finished. We were done. We were doing the outro, and then all of a sudden, boop, power goes out and i and it, and it made me so mad because I, not only did we have a good conversation not only did we enjoy the video but i knew that the fans would just be like huh i wonder why they don't do doug walker videos anymore <laughs> number one reason is because they're very long like uh, most D- of doug's videos are 25 to 30 minutes long there's some people out there who want us to react to videos that are over an hour long. Like we make special, we, like we make special like occasions out of it. Whenever we do like yeah, an yeah, internet historian yeah, yeah, one, yeah, which yeah, is like so 50 like, minutes long, um, which we took a break. We had to take yeah. a break because you know <laughs> Nick was just Nick was just like the nicotine kicks hit me, man. I gotta go. <laughs> and then uh, and then yeah, he That's had to get up. Me. I'm like he had to thing. get up and he had to go smoke. Um, me, I had like me, I I. I usually would like to do more Doug Walker stuff. It's just, given the fact that we aren't, we don't see Micah as much because, you know, Life. Micah's got a lot of shit to do. And also because I would like to do, because we're also doing anime reactions that we have to stay concurrent on. Uh, and also TV show reactions like The Witcher and all that. That I mean, it's it's difficult to keep track exactly. of everything. Yeah. There's a whole it, lot of stuff out there. Yeah, and and we and trying to do the Doug Walker reactions, which are 25 to 30 minutes long, and you know, 
if we were to just be like, you know, do like a quick two, three minute intro and like a two or three minute outro, that to me would not suffice enough of a reaction video to be enough to merit us like doing a re, uh, like a nostalgia critic reaction. Because if we only add like four to five minutes to the overall runtime of it with very little discussion or anything like that, what's the point? What is the point of us doing it? There's no other point to us doing it. Because here's the thing. If people want to watch Doug's videos, they're free to watch all over the Internet. Now, if you want to get our reactions to stuff and see us laugh and all that and make jokes, I mean, that's all well and good. But for the most part, guys, I mean, I feel like our conversations at the beginning, our conversations during, and our conversations at the end have to at least uh, be a certain amount to compound onto the overall runtime of what we're reacting to, or it won't be worth it at all. Because I, I don't, I do yeah, reaction. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a reaction. Video. Well, otherwise, yeah, it wouldn't be a reaction video. And I've said this in the past. I hate reaction channels that just. Uh, I saw this kid. Literally, it was this kid who reacted to Markiplier's most popular video, <clears throat> most popular videos. And it was basically he. You know, Markiplier usually has his webcam up here in this one corner of the video. He had his over here, but like this big, like taking up that much space, <laughs> and the rest of it was just Markiplier's video. And at the beginning, he's like, hey guys, I'm doing a reaction to Markiplier's video. Let's see what happens. Not, Plays not, the entire video, doesn't say a fucking I'll word during the entire like thing. Clint Eastwood, I'm like, why don't I just watch the actual video and support exactly, that? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it and, happens sometimes. And the thing is, this kid didn't link Markiplier's channel. He didn't put Markiplier's what? name in the description. He didn't put Markiplier's name in the title. Nothing. He just... Oh God! The rookie mistakes. I've seen that a lot, kid. though. I've seen a lot, though. I know, sadly. and reaction, and it, and it gives reaction channels a bad name. Mm -hmm. And look, I know, like doing reactions, like is frowned on in certain circles of the internet. And if people want to shit on us for it, feel free to. I don't really mm -hmm. care if you don't like I, what we're doing. Like you this, don't have to watch it. I feel like this channel provides a lot more than just reacts. We, well, no, I know, and it's mostly our conversations. I mean, to be honest, I mean, well, I, li I like talking about interesting stuff, and you know. Being able to share your opinions and stuff, I think, is a little bit more entertaining than just the facial expressions. You know, yeah. we, we do make some funny facial expressions, but we also say some pretty, um, you know, yeah, uh, and, funny comments towards stuff too. And I and I don't like and I and like I said, I've said this before. I want to diversify our content, put more stuff out there, so that people know that we're not just a reaction channel. That's why I changed the name to Renegade Media Group for a long time. I wanted to do short films for a long time. I wanted to do other stuff, uh, you know, like the weapons videos and uh, also the, our, our shooting videos that we used to do all the time back in the day. I'd love to do more stuff with that, in which I have, I have stuff for us to do it, but we haven't had the ability to because, well, number one, um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of drama on the channel over the last year, and we're now finally, like, fully getting over it and getting past it. And there's still people out there, like, I've seen people in some of our comment sections still trying to start shit, and I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore, guys. I've moved past it. It's been a year. I am done arguing about this stuff. And also, here, and also, uh, one thing I'm glad about is here recently we've been, uh, we've had Quinn back with us doing a couple things, in which uh, this upcoming Saturday you will be seeing exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, look forward to that. But uh, yeah, uh, the whole the whole rigmarole about you know about us wanting to do more stuff has really you know has really taken off because of this guy right here and this guy right here and also Nick helping to take editing help you know relieve a lot of editing duties on me and you know bringing in a new influx of creative people who actually want to create more stuff instead of resting because that's one thing that I that's my shit. well that's I, I provide moral support. And also, you provide this awesome space, and you're also you're also a very you know very more than like 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 more than capable person when it comes to uh, what you're doing with uh, your 3D animations, your artwork, your stories, and everything like that. I swear to God, that, like I've been working on my shit. <laughs> you need to give me the o like an OBJ file of that so I can make a 3D uh, yeah, model yeah, of it. I still it. need a model. It, it shouldn't take too long though, because it's literally just like super stealthy like flat surfaces that are very angular but yeah, well, I've, yeah. Been, I've been working on that I need to get back and focus on my well it's because uh, so. oh by the way chat I have a 3D printer now uh, and it's one of the resin based ones so here's one thing I want to ask you all uh, penis 
You're gonna get a 3D model penis, as I promise. No, no, not no, stuff like that. I was thinking a Nate bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be I funny. Think it'd be awesome that would be that funny. Uh, but actually, one thing I actually wanted to ask uh, everyone out there: uh, a long time ago, uh, we promised certain people who donated uh, <clears throat> to help save the channel about a year and a half ago uh, if they would like keychains, and we never delivered on that. And I would like to extend the offer out to people who did contribute back then. I will go back and I will look, and I'll ask you all if you if you want to one of the keychains that we had an idea for. The keychain itself said, "I I donated to save the Renegades, and all I got was a stupid keychain." <laughs> that that's that's what it says. Uh, but yeah, that was a long time ago too. That was I just get the, the logo. I can't wait till like. 3D food printers or like full mainstream. Oh yeah, where you can like 3D print burger, mm -hmm. like burger patties. <laughs> that way, it's like com like almost completely like torture free. It, it prints and like it cooks and everything. It's basically it's like literally as close as you're gonna get to like the Jetsons where they put the. Or dun, not, not dun, just, uh, dun, dun. Not, Crystal Burgers has uh, one of those. I mean, no, Jet <laughs> Jetsons was like the pills or something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back to the Future where they put like the <laughs> tiny little pizza in the microwave yeah. or whatever, and it, like. Yeah, you know, what was it like a uh, moisturizer or something, humidifier, something. Like yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Like swell up. But, oh yeah, it's yeah. a de it's a uh, it, it rehydrator. Rehydrator. Yeah, it's a rehydrator because they dehydrated food to shrink it down <laughs> so much, and then they would rehydrate. They had that in uh, in Back to the Future Part Two. Mm -hmm. uh, they went to pizza. Saying. They went to Pizza Hut and they ripped open the little like thing. It was like a little cookie, and they were just like they're like rehydrate level four, so please. So Joel or Joel, sorry, I'm not sure how to say her name. Wants Mike to bring the Godzilla slippers back. Ah, well, that's the thing. Uh, I don't know if Micah still has those. Uh, he, uh, I've asked him to bring them back because the people because the people love it whenever he. He has the slippers on but um yeah i don't know he's like he's uh i don't know if caleb stole them uh because that's one thing him and caleb still live still live together and uh they <laughs> i don't know if caleb has stolen them and it's just like you will never lay claim to these slippers again i have decreed it caleb the moderator of chat who lets people know when the video truly begins <laughs> uh you guys are awesome thank you joel nascimento thank you so much uh, <laughs> we got any hey. memes up? Oh, have we gotten any yet, Nick? Any memes? Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. Well, no memes yet. Well, yeah, we also, uh, also, uh, I brought uh, an older TV I had down here along with a stand, and uh, we've uh, we made it to where Roan doesn't have to keep wheeling his like sharp TV down here, Sorry, like, he, like him getting it off the stand it. and putting it on the thing and getting it down here. Like, he doesn't have to do that anymore. Yeah, yeah, set up a bit quick and easy. Literally just lift it off and put it on there. But yeah, you put it on that that whatever. desk and you got to roll it all the way down the hallways. Hey, I'm yeah. not going to complain about another TV. Next thing you know, one of the cats comes out of nowhere, pounces on your back, TV falls over, dead. Well, the TV is dead. Not the cat. cat. We'll Not the too. cat. Not the cat. The cat won't die. <laughs> the cat will find a way to live. Oh, because... the cat will die if it knocks over my fucking TV. Meow. Meow. It'll die, I can sure. Oh, God. Sounds like Lulu. Meow. <laughs> I was kind of like the Every uh, <laughs> Gary from SpongeBob. <laughs> well, that's what Lulu sounds like yeah. every time we walk I love, upstairs. I never really got that, that concept of like... But for SpongeBob, of like, okay, a sponge is, you know, SpongeBob, a sentient sponge. Is, how is a as a snail less sentient than a sponge in this in this calculation? Why how the is, fuck does he live in a pineapple? Why does I anything know. in SpongeBob need to make sense? It's, but it's, yeah. it's just, it, it annoys it's, me because it, <laughs> you're gonna have all the fish and the crabs and everything is sentient, but the snails, no, the snails are. They're, they're animals. Well, I mean, they're, they're it kind of makes sense because, you know, SpongeBob's kind of brain dead, and the sponge really doesn't have a brain, so it just he, got a few neurons. The star, the star oh, God, what about, does a sponge even have neurons? <laughs> no. I don't think a sponge well, even has neurons. Needs needs to be a kitten cam. Actually, if you want internet, I can set one up. I can set we up a kitten cam. Cats. Oh, well, yeah. And also, Man. I can set up one for Lulu, too. We'll because just, dude, we, every podcast, we can have a new cat here because we got, like, fucking. Bring a new cat over. Yeah, <laughs> they say you know the cat will just be sitting up here amongst all the lights and just like be scared out of its mind. Mm. Just be, just be like, be like, mm. just sit there and claw Roan to death. Out on the set with me for like an hour. Oh, that's right, <laughs> Clink. Colonel Clink. Yeah. We call, it, we call her Pickles now. Oh, Pickles. Yeah, Pickles. I think Change she, the name of your animals. According uh, to Ron, she may already be pregnant. Oh, uh -oh. a three D challenge coin that is the Renegade R would be cool. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that a lot, Oxy. That actually uh, would be really cool. Challenge coin. 
uh, like you know one of the like a Thundercats coin, except yeah. like it has the has the Renegade R. That on you it. would three D print or the yeah like, that I would three D print because if you get those, the, like actually made. It, and here's the beautiful thing about it: I wouldn't have to just do one at a time. Where this printer actually is resin based. And it and it has a UV uh, the UV light can cover a, like a certain build uh, build envelope. I can actually like stack them up and print out like like what, ten, 10 or time? twelve of them at the same time, depending on how thick I want them to be. Like it would be yeah, pretty easy. Well, yeah. Thick. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool and hand them out blankly so people can paint them any color they want. <laughs> One stream. Send, send us pictures of your custom Renegade coin paint job. Oh, that'd be cool. Because I like painting my own stuff. Can you. Those, like models, you know? Because obviously you got the, the theme of like black and red. Can you set up like different. Uh, I don't know, it's like your polyurethane or whatever it is. Uh, it's a. Uh, it, uh, the resin yeah. base, it's a uh, poly. Uh, I forget the. I forget the, fine, right? yeah the poly but it's, like, it's a poly and polymer can resin. It, can it do multiple colors? I, mean, um, I know you like you can't get it, detail. It right? can. Cool. Here's what you have to do: you have to build a 3D model, and then you have to cut the section out that you want to be the different color. Right. And you have to keep the size ratio the same, and you have to put little uh, like put little indentions in there for snap-ons. Got it. And then you they have they have the tools where you can do that. But, I've seen them where they, they create. Yeah, they create like little female and male points to like, yes. to like glue and stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, and also, and also another thing too is uh, they also have the uh, they also have a. Uh, the, There's actually one thing I thought about doing with uh, Nick's band's logo, like the like Paradoxum, hmm. uh, where their primary uh, things are black and green. Uh, they actually have this really cool, like really cool, like uh, uh, green, like like slime green color, mm -hmm. and like pitch black. So what you can actually do is get in the tray and you can actually mix the colors together and you can like get a stick in there and you can actually like like mold the the colors together however you want okay yeah. so you can actually like if you want you can actually get like little droppers in there and put in the colors in different places and the 3d printer will will pick it up <laughs> as it goes and uh i've actually seen some multicolored models that turn out looking like like crazy mm. how awesome they look uh, if you like there's actually one that one person did uh, they had a translucent one at the base of it and then they ink dropped in uh, like red in the middle and then they ink dropped translucent paint over on top of it and when it printed out uh, it looked like the creature had translucent skin and you could see the red underneath it it was really cool I love that it's pretty cool, like as far as how far 3D printers have come. Because, like, I mean, like you don't you know, like it's it's amazing how many pieces of like you know what are in, in cars and airplanes and stuff are just 3D printed now. Yeah, because it's so much easier to use that with like the laser centering and stuff for metals. Oh yeah. Than like trying to get, like they're just components that they they design that just can't be machined. Well, it's, it's just not efficient. Enough. Well, yeah, and 3D and printing is easy. metal 3D printers are top of the line stuff right now especially like the high like the high end metals like I figured titanium a CNC and, machine for that stuff well they kind well the CNC they machine can. basically is just a giant metal 3D printer or pretty much any like material that. but I don't know about titanium or anything like that you'd have to have yeah, some I mean, like diamond bit heads I, and stuff well like yeah that. Well, I don't know exactly how it all works I just know like because like, I've, I've looked up on things like you know how strong is 3D printed metal and stuff like in research for Axiom and stuff yeah. um, and you know apparently it's you know, it's pretty damn good. It's just there. You know, it depends on the materials you're using and stuff. But there, mm -hmm. you know, well, it's uh, well. There's a guy who made a giant 3D printing machine, and literally printed concrete houses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. yeah he literally printed concrete mm -hmm. houses. Uh, uh, he did Aircrete. like three layers. Are you familiar with Aircrete? Aircrete. No. Yeah. It's a uh, instead of just traditional concrete with, like water, it's actually infused it's like with an aerogel. Kind air, of? Yeah. Well, they kind of it's. Um, it's basically infused with um, pressured air. <laughs> oh, and like so air the, pockets. Yeah, so the the bubbles inside there, instead of having yeah. water in them, it's air. And yeah. it's actually, where it's pressurized, they're a lot more durable than just water, and they let they weigh, like, not near as much. Huh. So you can build them pretty quick, like, like and yeah. a hell of a lot cheaper, too, though. Because you don't have to have just, like, 50-50 mortar. Yeah. Um, you can use, like, literally... Uh, ten percent of the mortar and the rest of it's air, mm -hmm. and they make uh, like domes and stuff out of them. So that, like that's that's the thing like the mindset that I think of when I'm working on Axiom of like you know you're setting up colonies on planets and stuff. You need to be able to like prefab all kinds of structures you know mm -hmm. as quick as you can. Yeah, uh, kind of like the thing in, in uh, Titanfall two. 
where they're like they're just like which like they're building all these cool places and then they're just like using them on a, like a combat simulation thing and then throwing um, them away. Well, yeah, well, kind of funny, well the ease of use of that. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Also, uh, I don't think the donation sound is working. Yeah, you're right. We've had a couple donations, but yet the sound hasn't come through. Oh, no. I think it, I think it's where we got this new TV set up that it's uh, it's not wanting to work properly. Did you test the audio on the new TV TV at all? Here, uh, yeah, think, it was playing audio earlier. Here, I think, I, uh, actually, I think the sound bar, I it, think the... It was pretty loud earlier when you was playing the video. auto shut off. I forgot about that. Oh, great. So I'll have, to, I'll have to get that fixed. But for now, we'll just uh, use this. Use the TV audio? We'll just use the TV audio. Sorry about that. I forgot I forgot that that's the one Achilles heel of it. I just got to get a universal remote for the, uh, for the uh, sound bar. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, we have a couple. Uh, Indominus Rex actually says, "Hey, uh, y'all, go, y'all would be perfect for ESPN." Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> yeah, we would be. Except, uh, except, you know what I would do if I had my choice of who would be who would run ESPN forever? I would resurrect Stuart Scott and have him be the and have him just be everything. He was my favorite <laughs> analyst. There's multiple clones. Of them. Well, yeah. Well, him and Scott Van Pelt. I like Scott Van Pelt. Okay, but. But Stuart Scott just had just was like a consummate professional, entertaining as hell, and never ever let his agen- let the agenda drive where he where the conversation was going. He always stuck to the point, and that's what I loved about him. <laughs> you know, God rest his soul. You know, he was he was a hell of a man. But yeah, uh, <laughs> the gremlins strike again. Yes, they do. Uh, yeah, go ahead. The gremlins. Uh, that's from Juggernaut or sixty. Okay. What you got, Juggernaut? What you got for us? Oh, no, Cedric. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, Lumbar. Yes. I thought she was getting ready to, like, suplex him. Hell <laughs> no. Like, ah, nope. Well, she bye. could. Hey, she bye could. bye to your backbones, because here they go. Juggernaut 64 commented hello there with us. Hello, Hello, it's me. And then I got another one that's only 17 seconds long, and it's from Logan. And it's a hey. Here you go. Uh-oh. What do we got? Hey, that's my driving teacher, Mrs. Puff. Mrs. Puff? Oh, she's married. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Krabs. She's single. Then what happened to Mr. Puff? Oh! <laughs> this one. Oh. 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 Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, there's a channel I use. I I watch. Uh, they actually used the pufferfish like breathing noise as their censoring sound. <laughs> it's like shut the all up. <laughs> That's what I used to say all the time. Your mother is a pufferfish. <laughs> Your mother is a blowfish. <laughs> what did you get? Next? Any more right now or? Nope. Okay. Well, that was, well, yeah, that was quick. I Two. once knew a fine gentleman. Two His quick. name was Biggest Dickus. Biggest so, Dickus, sir. That's a joke, sir. Apparently, coronavirus is turning into 28 days later. Uh, so apparently so, because... It's China. It has a mortality rate of 3%. It's not really anything we're right. worry about. Whoa. And it's I, mostly it's... old people and, in, in, like, infants. That's yeah, the... Yep. Much like much like SARS, much like swine flu, Masa- much like Masa- every other thing out there. Must sound bad to say, but... Because it's a man-made virus, but it's like... They compare it to SARS and shit, but it essentially just gives you pneumonia, and antivirals don't work on it. So it's like, if you don't have a compromised immune system, you'll probably be okay. Now, if you were talking about something like the Spanish flu... It's also happening over there uh, they're short on medical supplies and shit. Welcome to China. Yeah, they're like... We have enough stuff here to keep it from spreading when it gets over here, basically. Apparently they threw together like a prefabricated hospital. Or they're in, the <laughs> in six like, days. Yeah, six days. Like, yeah, days. and they told people, oh... You can't leave the city, but I don't live here. Too bad. You live yeah. here now. Yeah, you. This is you are you quarantined. Um, Say bye to your right. I mean, but like the origin of it is, it's not surprising. The 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 fish markets and stuff Uh-oh. they they have like the you know there's no. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Uh, Nick, uh, the donations thing like donations and memes accepted in the description. Uh, actually, can you move that underneath? The uh, like the overlay stuff. Uh, 
because it's uh, it it was obscuring the uh, memes when they came up. Maybe it's all the pollution in the water. Sorry about that. Well, it's, made it's, the fix uh, the I mean, fish it's, toxic. It's multiple factors. I mean, it's, it's, it's like the, toxic the, Avenger the, except the with fish. fish. But like they're they're working in in environments. There's no hygiene. There's no you don't have like the FDA coming in and saying no, you can't be open. This place is you know contaminated. Contaminated. Yeah. They're I mean they're literally they're cutting fish. You know, in open uh, air, uh, open air. You know, just on on like no, tables. like very little to they, no sanitation. Yeah, they, they but, might. But I saw Ling Ling's bathwater yeah. on Wish. dot com. Yeah. yeah, they might. <laughs> it's got to be said. They there. might hose off the table at the end of the day. But then they're coming back the next day. <laughs> that is so racist. I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't yeah. Mean to just <laughs> no, well, well, and so it's it's just a breeding <clears throat> ground for viruses. It is yeah. like there's a movie that came out a few years ago called Contagion. Do you ever see it? I, yeah. yeah, I remember it. Yeah, Matt Damon, they like the, like I think Gwyneth with the red Pal- one. Yeah, yeah, Matt Damon, Gwyneth Paltrow, Marion Cotillard, Lawrence Fishburne, Santa Lathan, huge cast, awesome, awesome big cast. Um, the fear mongering that that film put out was around the time that was around the time swine flu was said mm-hmm. to be you know a, a, a plague equivalent to that of the Spanish flu. It's like, look, here's the thing that people need to understand: Spanish flu spread because of ignorance and because it was around the time where we stopped doing the leeches and bloodletting and more of the soup and so- and more and soup uh, and soap phases. Where we actually start washing our hands with soap and and eating hot, and eating hot soup and staying warm instead of letting the witch doc, or letting the uh, plague doctor come in and uh, blood let us and you know just put leeches on us all well, the time. And you also had World War One going on too. Well, time. world no, World War Two, World War One just ended. It was just it was over. Right, but I'm saying like as far as people's. You know, you, the attention to the flu wasn't as high because you had the whole. The, the, the That's flu true as well, yeah. and and you see the thing is, whenever you see, there's actually a really great uh, pair of videos out there if you want to watch them by CGP Gray. Uh, it's called America Pox, the Missing Plague. For instance, uh, it talks about why uh, you know, uh, whenever the Europeans came over to the New World. Why all the natives died from like no, like ninety five percent of the natives died to exposure to all these foreign diseases that came over from the old world. Foreign why what? Why was it that the new world did not have one of their own? And mm-hmm. CGP Gray actually explains it and put and just puts it out there for everyone to see as to why that never happened. It was because Amer- uh, over here in the uh, you know. Like North and See, South America, one of, um, we never had we never had si- like big cities. Right. We know. never had big cities. We never had metropolitan areas. We never had like central flow sewage where where uh, cholera springs up wherever you uh, are terrible at separating your drinking water from your pooping water, mm-hmm. and we didn't have uh, we that was not prevalent over here in the New World. I want you to think on that on extra credits. The, um, I know it's, uh, on the statement from India where they were protecting the Sentinelese Island, they said um, that's the, one of the main reasons they don't want anybody yeah. mess with the islands because they don't know what type of diseases are there and they don't have a way to counteract it if they did, mm. you know, yeah. if it was to kind of have an outbreak because there's a good chance that they're – since it's never been touched by outside – Human well, it's civilization. the same thing with like the, the tribes in like the Amazon and stuff. Too. Yeah. Well, yeah, the tribes in the Amazon. Also, certain countries in Africa. I mean, that's why malaria is well, so deadly to uh, to Caucasians well, because Caucasians those, don't uh, have a lot a of the tribes still practice them. bloodletting and a bunch yeah. of other old school remedies, which we know you know don't work. falls under the bloodborne pathogens category of no no. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, if you want to know where all of our big diseases come from, you know, measles, uh, whooping cough, uh, smallpox. They all come from animals. And here's the thing. Whenever the disease attacks you, it doesn't think that it's attacking a human. It's a, It thinks that it's attacking Stop. whatever it came yeah, from. It's, it's a biological... Yeah. You know, we are and, all just chemicals. We are biology. I mean... Well, yeah, but, but a disease-jumping species is very rare, and the only time that it happens is in big cities. Big cities where they have open butcher butcher's markets, where they do not, they do not sanitize anything. That's the reason why uh, the Black Plague spread so much. Now, and that's why it killed one-third of Europe's population. Literally, one-third of the world's population in Europe, gone. I mean, 75 million people gone in four years. From, from what That's I heard, scary. From what I heard, like the you know the big issue with the coronavirus you know right now is that it's got such a long incubation period. It takes like two weeks potentially 
depending on, yeah, obviously, it varies from person to person, but, like, it could take up to two weeks before symptoms are actually, you know, prevalent and noticeable. Uh, seen. So, I mean, you think about how, how many people that virus can come in contact with in two weeks just from one person. And yeah. Especially when you have money. To, you know? Money is, like, the most yeah. nastiest, well, that was deadliest the plot of the stuff division. you can do. I mean, yeah. 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 Well, that's why, that's why I, I, I mostly don't carry cash on me. I don't carry cash on me because, you know, they're, like, every single one of them. Uh, it's touched, like, 15, 20. Well, years. not only that, but all the residue that's on it from the stuff that it's been around. Hmm. For instance, did you know that more than 70% of all dollars, all, like, physical cash money dollars in the world that we have right now, 70% of them have Boots. cocaine residue on them? I was oh. you were saying, like, inside of strippers. I about to say <laughs> boobs. I was going to say. Oh, like, no, 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 no. Cocaine, that's, that's boobs, second yeah. thing. No, cocaine, that's, like, that's the primary use of that. I mean. <laughs> hey, it's like a bonus, you know. You make a $100 bill, you get a little bonus with there. Well, no, no, no. Right actually, of... there's not enough on there for it. To, like, it, you'd actually have to dip a thousand, like, different bills just to get enough cocaine residue to get a kick out of it. Aww. Bummer. <laughs> I was hoping to get a bonus. So it's basically a thousand dollar high. You got it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. A big thousand dollar high. And, and plus the effort you'd have to go through, like, the dipping process, the drying process, the extraction <laughs> yeah, process, yeah, yeah. would cost you more time and effort than it's worth. If you, if you want cocaine, just just go just go, <laughs> just go, get just go to Columbia and, you know, have some coca leaves. I mean, honestly, to, you know, truck drivers actually, like, keep, like, a bag of coca leaves in their, like, in their trucks at all times to and chew on so they can make it over the hills yeah. because they don't want to, because they can't, if they fall asleep, they're going to go straight off the edge. Well, I mean, like, like now these these days we have uh, the regulations for truck drivers. They can only go like. Well, no, no, I'm yeah, talking like Colombian truck drivers. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, here I was in about the state you can't have no, that yeah. here. No, here no in the states they have like roads that are like this fucking narrow. Well, and yeah. Whereas now, here, now we have a love station with a lot of caffeine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, welcome yeah. to Lowe's. In Colombia, they have like the fucking roads that's like this fucking wide. And there's a 300 foot drop on one side. Yeah, oh yeah. And I love, I love, I. It makes me sad, but at the same time, it's sort of a here's your sign moment. Uh, when I hear about people who die riding on the, you know, like bike riding on those paths, the, I'm just the, like the road of death. Well, who would have been surprised? Yeah, it's like this one. It's like this one family in Israel tried to sue the Colombian government for you know their child who died, you know, riding on the road of death. It's just like. Riding Did on you the road not road? read the sign? Yeah. Well, that, I think that's what that's like the nickname they have because yeah. so many accents. No, 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 no. There's a sign as the at the beginning of the road on the on the mountain pass of the uh, I forget the mountain chain that it is, but there's a but there's a sign there that says, "Hey, this is this is not recommended for bike riding at all. It, no. Ride at your own risk." Well, I mean, and the, the road. The is Colombian in... government pretty much laughed that family out of the courtroom. Yeah. What was that one video I saw? There's like a car riding on it and a cow, or like a cow, yeah. literally fell from like the top of the cliff and landed on the car. Oh, All right, Fuck. landed on the car right as this big ass like box truck was trying to come and get. To it. it was like, oh boy, here we go. It was like so, it was like some like so, uh, like so, so you call up the State Farm. Shit. You're like State Farm. Am I covered by a big large cow that lands in my car? And they're like. Nah, I'm sorry, got you heard it. Say that. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, except this wasn't a comedy <laughs> thing. It was a. It was on. Um, what was that? Uh, it was on ridiculousness. It was. Uh, oh yeah, yeah I love yeah. that show. I've watched that show so much. Rob Deerdick. I know that road is like I think in a lot of places it's not even wide enough for two cars to so like. No, no, it's not. It's you not. Go too far and like another car is coming on me with a new. Have a whole just hope, just hope that you're on the inlay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hope that you're on the inlay because if you're too far out, next thing you know, that one car is just going to be like, "Oh, you're like, giving me space. I'm just going to park right in there." Now you've got to pull back. That's one of those situations where it's like, oh, "You wouldn't find me on the road to begin with." Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know where. Like, I mean, I guess it's just a cost thing, but like, yeah, you know, at some point you got to make the, the logical step. Of, okay. This isn't very safe. Let's build a better road. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I guess. I mean, they'll have to blast into the side and take it down, but you can it. dig deeper into the mountain. I mean, that's no, what we got yeah. here. I mean, we got some sketchy roads here that are drop off, but nothing like that. No. no. I mean, well, and like I'm surprised. Like uh, you've heard of like the uh, the Darien Gap uh, between Panama and Colombia, mm -hmm. where there's basically no there's no roads or anything. Like that's essentially a, uh, like I think it's like two or three hundred miles of just 
wilderness. There's no way to get across because I guess the um, it's you part two, of it, part two or three hundred miles. Yeah, oh, that's what I call a forest. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. There's no way. Well, it's, it's, like, it's called the Darien, plus it's protected. It's called too. the Darien Gap because that's basically the break in like the American Highway, whatever that runs from Canada to like Chile. And stuff. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I think you have to like take a ferry basically up from Co- Colombia to, to Panama. Um, but like it's it's like, well, like, like why can't we just build a road there? And I guess it's, it has something to do with one. There's the the nature nature preservation. It's protected. And, yeah, yeah, protect, protected lands. Um, but it's also just the terrain is just fucking. Oh, it's crazy. fucking not n- not and good. And you also have a lot of drug trafficking kind of going in. Yeah, next thing you know, uh, uh, like the Colombians are just going to be like, so uh, you're building a road, huh? Uh, so tell no, me, no, you're not. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's like it's like uh, for now. Uh, let's just say, uh, uh, what happens if uh, you know you're a loader over there uh, just so having a break? Uh, <laughs> what about then, huh? And then uh, I'll be like, well, it'd be unfortunate. I'll be like, yeah, it would, man. Yeah, it would. But I'll oh. just hire a bunch of other Colombians and we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hire my friends over What's here. What you got in the back oh, of the also, truck? Oh, also, we got coffee uh, beans. Coffee beans. Yeah, coffee, coffee yeah, beans. Yeah, coffee That's beans and, uh, and uh, leaves for mulch. Mm. Yep, <laughs> mulch leaves. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, we have some memes. I saw. Uh, how many we got now, Nick? You you mulch them with your feet. Three. Th- Technically three. Three? You okay. ever ran on mulch with just bare feet? <laughs> oh, it I've sucks. Done. Oh, don't recommend No, it, it sucks. I like that new mulch, that rubberized stuff. Yeah, that that's kids so good. We didn't have that growing no. up. No, we were lucky to have no, mulch. We had these <laughs> giant wood chips that if you're like if you're wearing flip flops that day, have a splinter in the oh, side of your foot. Yeah. Oh, right between your toes. <laughs> oh yeah. Well the rubber I had mulch one is of those. nice too, because you don't have to replace it nearly as much. No. no. I always wear shoes. No, I learned as a kid. But, <laughs> you know, yeah, I didn't. I was I was yeah, a dumb kid. I've I, I walked on gravel. Road. I I walked across like piping hot asphalt. Yeah, dude, I was a dumb kid. Thank you. All right, what you got? All right. How many? Oh, He's was it a type, type in one? Oh, one. You remember so like the uh, you know the okay. All right, Jugger. But then I start looking at him as the cure. You know, I would not mind a live action Shrek, especially with the uh, as good as the effects are for uh, the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Right. Then Jake Chris donated and said, Who has a meme? And, uh, has a meme so. All right. I, I didn't really get why people didn't like. The the version of the Hulk there. It's because it's because he didn't really get a, a hit back against. Uh, oh hey, Rondo of Blood. Oh. Basically, a little uh, cut scene in uh, <laughs> Castlevania, and they just yeah, the words of Rondo words. of Blood. Uh, that's uh, that's like one of the like I, I think it's an updated one too, because uh, that yeah, looked look, that look, three D. Yeah, that because the original was on like a like PlayStation, it was PlayStation I think. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the whole thing with uh, that is like Richter confronts Dracula and defeats him, and actually it's just like what is a man but a miserable little pile of secrets mm. yeah and that whole line is like but enough talk how about you <laughs> and you know the whole fight was pretty cool I did but, not come here to what were you saying on the whole Hulk thing uh, but the the reason why is because the Hulk did not get a chance to really hit back at Thanos given how bad Thanos whipped his ass in in uh, Infinity War oh. And they also thought that the whole I, I just thought people would be, like, weren't liking him because he became 
more scientisty. Well, he became he became he, he became the, not an angry rage monster. Well, he became he well, they said, well, that, though, well they said no he was, but the Hulk no. himself like as the Hulk became I know this is going to be terrible to say. Um my favorite Hulk series was the old cheesy one. No, the no. one when he had long hair. And Brian Big Brian Bixby yeah, and uh, Lou Ferrigno. Dude, it was a good show, man. Like, like live action. Live yes. Action. Yeah, it was live action. From, um, I think like, it was back in early two thousands. No, 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 it was like, it was like in the seventies. Like seventies. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the, the live action. One. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Oh, no. To me, that was the most like um, closer to home one. It wasn't really like well, you know, the one like you're thinking Avengers of the Ang Lee one. Hmm. Yeah, it wasn't more like it, like the Avengers universe Hulk that you see today. This yeah. this is old school. Yeah, yeah. But well, I think story wise, I mean, it was very deep. It was just very cheesy because of the effects at the time. Well, it really, it was just a big man. That pa- they painted green. Yeah, like a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno. But that you want to know show, uh, the the Incredible Hulk uh, was known for a uh, was known for one uh, thing back then, especially. Uh, the uh, Lonely Man theme. It was this is how every episode <laughs> ended. It was literally him walking down Dude, the road. Dude, that show was sad, man. Like it had a lot of sad moments in there. Like, well, yeah, it was because it was it was Bruce Banner dealing with the uh, or David at the it was David in that one. Yeah, but it was David Banner pretty much dealing with you know his identity as this yeah, uh, as this creature because. He couldn't stay in one place for too long because eventually yeah. people figured and it out. He couldn't lose his him. temper because every time he did, it would burn bridges and he mm-hmm. would hurt more people than he would actually help. Yeah. And, and I like that. Thing. And he could. He was trying to figure out a way to hone this, and you know, it, it was a very good show. I mean, well, I, I think it hit deeper than a lot of the just the action well, super stuff. No, you, you know? see, I like the action stuff because that's what that's what entertains like that's what entertains people. But you have to have the heart to it. Yeah. Which the Edward Norton one that they did had a heart to it. It's just it wasn't. It, it's just that the people who okay, it was the guy a very who did the long movie. Yeah, it was, was the guy that directed it. Louis Leterrier is is not okay. He's a talented director. He's a talented cinematographer. But whenever you give him full control over something. He will take his sweet ass time boring you to death before he gives you what you want. It was almost all build up, and then when it finally gave you what you want, it was like, wow, that was a ton of build up for just a little bit of action, you know? I don't know well, yeah. what the fuck you guys are talking about. Have you, you ever seen any of the Hulk movies? The I, Edward I, Norton. I've okay. seen, obviously, the Marvel stuff, and then the one that came out before that. The, the, no, no, well, yeah, yeah the, 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 the Marvel one, that's the one with Edward Norton. That was the one with Edward Norton. It was the second, it was the very second. Uh, uh, like f- film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, okay. it was the one right after Iron Man. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the, you're talking about the Ang Lee the one. The Ang Lee one. Yeah, yeah with Jennifer all the Marvel Con- stuff. And yeah, the which one? Okay. You seen the one where he takes the tank and literally beats yeah, that, that, shit that up. was that was that's, awesome. That's, that's, but that, that like movie, the Comanche helicopter. But that movie so was really yeah. long. Yeah. No, like, yeah, really well, long. No, that's Ang Lee. Ang Lee. I mean, I love Ang Lee as a filmmaker. Life of Pi is really good. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is really good. Um, and but it's just the concluding uh, fight in that one was so confusing because like yeah well, you had like, he's a bit like, too powerful then, like, you know? I guess the military nukes them with like a green a green, green nuke. nuke yeah, yeah green yeah. nuke well he eventually became Godzilla out. powerful like it was nothing because he was yeah. just like throwing tanks like there were nothing it was like deflecting missiles just by deflecting. yeah bullshit yeah. And I was like my, ma- fa- my favorite one was where he literally bit the head off of the missile and spat it back <laughs> yeah, at yeah, I was like really like <laughs> I, I thought that much. was funny it was but, funny it was entertaining for but, sure I like most of the Ang Lee movies, so. Ang Lee just it was not good yeah. it was not that good the one that came out much later with Edward Norton, the one in the Marvel Cinematic, the first one in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, no. was pretty good. I liked I liked the character development. I liked Ed Norton as as a uh, Bruce Banner. I liked uh, Liv Tyler as uh, Betty Ross, and I liked William Hurt as uh, T Bolt Ross. I liked I liked their characters. My only caveat was uh, was uh, you waste Tim Roth as the Abomination, and it's just like, come on, man, he's Tim Roth. Turn him loose. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah. that's enough of me complaining. Yeah, we got any, uh, any other memes? Yeah, there's one more from Sucker Logger. Yeah. All right. So meme me up. Meme us up. Meme me up, Scott. Meme it up. I fixed my camera. It was only the system broken also. 
So I had to come back again and show you the plate. Huh. This place is under here control of the government. I don't know what it has happening and what they are planning there. What city is that? Oh, this sounds when I arrived. Is this like a something UFO behind thing? the trees. A telephone pole. Oh, hell. Oh, shit. I see that. Not me, dude. I've been chugging. Run, dude. Run for your life. That siren always scared the shit out of dude. me when I was a kid. It's a walking siren head. Oh, shit. Oh, hello. Come in. <laughs> We don't want any. Don't walk towards it. Tell them you don't want any Girl Just Scout cookies. Walk away. Oh hell no! <laughs> what was that? Hmm, pretty creepy. I like that was it. That's creepy. I don't hell, know what I it was, like that. but it was cool. I it like that. It seemed like that. a Cloverfield kind of. Yeah. Kind uh, of. Kind of. I think see, definitely a little older. Found footage, found footage films took off after after the Blair Witch Project. As soon as the Blair Witch Project hit, they started dropping like wild, like just all over the place. Uh, did you ever watch? So we, we've burned to that. Did you ever watch Lost? Tape? Kind of, but at the same time, there's still some stuff there. I mean. Uh, the uh, the unfriended movies were really good. Yeah, they, they like, were really good. Yeah, one was good. Two was excellent. Two, yeah, the <laughs> second like, one's better. The dark by web far. was ridiculous. That was pretty cool. You better you were asking something. Yeah, have you seen Lost Tapes? Uh, it's an older show. No. Okay. Uh, definitely up there with the Twilight Zone, and uh, it was found footage way before like the Blair Witch and <laughs> stuff like that. Well, but, yeah, I, man, it was creepy. Every damn well, episode was so creepy. There's there's one horror film that came out a while back called The Poughkeepsie Tapes. I never got a chance to watch it. Uh, it was a... Uh, a the, the trailer for it scared the shit out of me because it seemed as though it was the, this criminal profile that was made up of these tapes. It was like an evidence-gathering thing of over 300 tapes all done by what seemed to be at first a voyeur, but then you very slowly started to see he started to involve himself more and more in these people's lives and learned about them and eventually uh, and eventually like kidnapped them and killed them. And it was it was some terrifying stuff like when I saw the trailer. Uh, then of course there was uh, the VHS movies. The first two are really good. Hmm. Uh, the first ones, the first one's pretty good. The second one's even better. Uh, there's uh, there's one in it uh, that is absolutely just like like crazy good. Uh, it deals with this cult that uh, that is a uh, the this camera crew goes to this uh, cult building in uh, Jakarta, hmm. which is in Indonesia. They go there and they. Uh, they're interviewing this guy who's like this cult leader and uh at first things seem a little uncomfortable they see these kids all sitting in a room the teacher's playing guitar they're singing songs everything seems good but then very slowly you start to see things that are off you start to see certain people are like like talking behind them and are following them mm. they're like trying to keep tabs on them and they ask them about it. they're like oh that's our private security don't worry about them they're just here to keep tabs on everything so that nothing goes wrong gotcha. and then uh very slowly it descends into complete and total madness and by the end of it by the end of it dude i was like i there was more to go because it it's an anthology film. There's like three or four stories in each film. Right. After that one film, I had to pause and just sit back and just be like, "Yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> perfect timing on that one. Perfect timing on that donation. Money off this bit. Yeah, yeah, it was money on my mind. Speaking of, and what? it was also directed by the same guy who did the Raid movies, Gareth Edwards. Okay, yeah. yeah, really good. Really. Yeah. Good. Speaking of like cult movies, uh, the Ritual. If you haven't seen that, um, yeah. God, that was so good. Yeah, that was actually one we wanted to was do that for uh, village there. It was oh man, that we was wanted so to do, good. One, do that one for Spooktober, but uh, I wasn't expecting or, uh, or, much. I mean, I'm a big horror fan, <laughs> but I'm one of the people when I watch horror, I never expect much. Uh, it's like oh, this looks pretty good. I want to watch it, and then yeah, I don't expect it we, to be much. We thought about man, doing it for October this year, but then but then we found out you'd seen it already. We we're just like ah, crud. Yeah, I think Nick's already seen it too. I think. Yep. Okay, I haven't. But man, that creature in there, the uh, I think it was based off of the mythological Leshen. You said it was something from a like from like Celtic mythology. Yeah, it's a uh, Norse or Celtic mythology. I'm not sure. I think it's but, Celtic. Yeah, but I know man, Leshen, that thing was awesome. I remember hearing Leshen and like the yeah, Leshen and in the, in the Witcher very similar. They uh, kind of protect the forest. Mm. Like a forest spirit, except they're not. Oh family. yeah, we're on the last. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're on the last episode of The Witcher. Uh, right. We have one more to go, and then we're finished. What episode have you guys put out on the? Oh, we're we finally put out episode five, I think, okay. five or six. Uh, so. So you, yeah, you guys. I've been, I, was, I was reading some shit last night about The Witcher that I just do not understand. Like, there's apparently an entire demographic of people that are usually on the side of logic for things that are very confused, I guess, about what they did with The Witcher. I guess they read articles about, like, rumored shit beforehand and just took that as fact and never watched it. One dude in the comments was like, I hate what they did to Triss. I can't believe they made her a black lady. Like, she's not black. She's fucking Caucasian, dude. Like, yeah, the it's woman like, who... What are you smoking? Like the woman who plays her, England. The, the only, like, I, I think it's Caucasian. I looked it up to make sure too. Like, I, I mean, I think I guess maybe it's just because visually, maybe because she looks so so different from the Triss in the games. I guess, but well, the Triss Marigold is she like actually looks Irish. like the one in the books because the one in the books actually has brown hair. That makes so. yeah, yeah. I'm assuming because they're doing all the stuff based on the books. But so. didn't the books just like release like at the same time as the new show? No, no, books, 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 been been books are what inspired them. But yeah. they were in another country, though, right? No, yeah, no, they're, they're, they're no, no. Language. They, like Polish, dude. They were Polish, and they were released like starting back in the 80s. And I heard they didn't get released to like an American, an official no, American they got translation released in like until like three. Okay, I was told they wasn't released till like earlier. This, no, they were the re-released. They, they, you know, they re-released stuff all the time oh. to go with like like they were they were originally released here in the states. I believe back in like like in some of them in the nineties, but then by the by two thousand three, all of them were available. Yeah. But then when the games started See, to come out, they re-released I mean, them again. And now that the the series is out, they're re-releasing them yet again. They're yeah. trying yeah they're trying anything to bolster the numbers. Yeah, and make yeah, more make, money. It, make as much money off it as you can. Yeah, I mean, don't blame them. Yeah. So. So, I mean, there's so many rumors surrounding The Witcher. You know, it's like so many rumors. I mean, as far as I know, there's only three games. I played a little bit of the first one, a little bit of the second one, and I haven't really got to play the third one as much as I'd like to. I understand the third one is yeah, what the, you need. Yeah, I've heard the third one's, like, epic. Well, I'm on Chapter 2 of the second one, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Oh, yeah. It got, like, really good reviews back when it came out. Yeah, I mean, I ha actually have Witcher 1 and 2 on, um, well, I had. They're not installed right now, but on PC and uh, my gripes with the first one was the gameplay was just atrociously rough like buggy and um, well, but it, I tried to play takes. it just for story and everything but eventually I just said you know what I'm just going to watch a YouTube video of the story so I can mm -hmm. get caught up and then I skipped to the second one and so I played the most of the second one but I've heard the third one's insanely good I just need to get time to get around to playing it so far I haven't had any problems with bugs in the gameplay on the first one I'm not sure on that one do we got any other memes? Uh, yes, there are a couple. Yes, I heard we had a few. Alright. Okay, so Master Hand donated $5. Thank you, Master Hand. Reminds me of that pistachio commercial. Is this what you want? Oh no. Come on, I'll blow your arm off. Bye. You don't oh, have to <laughs> You dipshit. No, shit. there's no way that yeah, actually no, that didn't happen. But say that would blow your arm off. Like <laughs> no, I don't know if it'd do that, but I mean it's just I stupid to do. I mean you could yeah, I've seen you could I've seen people get their arms blown off by just the um 
the transformers outside, and I'm pretty sure a bolt of electricity is a lot more than a transformer. I guess. I mean, yeah, I guess it just depends. On, <laughs> depends on the conductance and yeah. where, if you're grounded How much well. Iron do you have in your body. <laughs> yeah, but like it's yeah. a million volts of electricity. Yeah, you're pretty much dead, unless you're just. Well, from what gifted I, by I, the I've, gods. I don't know if I, mean, I don't know if there's truth to it, but I've heard that like a direct like a direct hit from lightning isn't as dangerous as like the ones that are arcing like when it hits a tree and then yeah. it walks over to you yeah it depends on if you're grounded or because yeah. i said like if um you're ever in an accident a car accident with electrical pole the worst thing you can do is get out of your car hmm. because as soon as you step your foot on the ground you're you're pretty much grounding yourself hmm. or not grounding yourself right there completing a circuit yeah for the, light, the electricity to flow through you into the ground mm-hmm. yeah pretty much asphalt's not a very good conductor no. so <laughs> nope uh, not, not to mention the rubber tires yeah However, it was bear grills actually they simulated that where they um where he simulated they simulated what to do on there and how to like how to get out of the car and everything but they he pretty much said you're pretty much screwed you're gonna have to wait till fire truck or ems gets there and they got to call the company and get them to cut the power off mm-hmm. and then even then like stuff is still holds a charge uh, so they got well, go like, to i saw like a, a wreck like some somebody was texting on their phone and swerved off the road it was it was, it was recording off somebody's dash cam mm-hmm. the car in front of them they basically weren't paying attention and hit a telephone pole and the dude that has the dash cam had to swerve out of the way because the telephone pole like split in the middle yeah and, like came falling down and he had to like swerve out of the way to not get fucking hit oh it scared me uh, just not too long ago i think it was like last month we had a storm and over by stills creek in front of, on the, the road there was literally a uh, power line laying across the road and i had to drive over it oh. i was like i hope this damn thing's off well i guess we're gonna find out <laughs> it's like you wanna, i got rubber tires you, so we'll see you want to see one of the craziest things i've ever seen uh there's actually a, a video of these guys playing like soccer football mm-hmm. and uh lightning strikes the arena and like half of the players go down from getting struck like yeah, the, the arcing basically. Yeah, and they like they all go down and like they're on the ground like oh fuck. What the hell does that Oh god. Yeah, it's it's honestly one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Yeah, lightning does some very strange stuff. There's tons of videos of just random lightning strikes where there's no storm, no nut it just boom mm-hmm. like right from the ground up. It's like Yeah Where the hell did that come from? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have the power of God. I mean, you can get it a lot, a lot with like, you know, especially like dust storms and stuff, because you're just, you know, that's just basically an electrostatic charge factory. Yeah. When you, like any kind of, you know, wind or. Yeah, dust when I lived in Florida, I mean, it was very common in the summer, even when it's not raining. Oh yeah, just yeah. Heat lightning everywhere. <laughs> oh, it was kind of pretty. We you see know, that around here across sometimes. the ocean. <laughs> yeah. But it's oh, um, it's, it's pretty beautiful. from a distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was at a picnic one time at Stills Creek, believe it or not. And and uh, lightning struck a tree that was near our thing, mm-hmm. split like the branch in pieces. But man, my ears were ringing for like an hour. That was the loudest boom I'd ever heard. It happened in my to life. me uh, when we were, uh, I was working at the Lowe's. Uh, I think it actually hit like one one strike hit right on one of those the light the Lights. light poles in the yeah. parking lot. There was no delay between that, and it actually knocked the power out of the store. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, because that that charge hit it hits the so yeah, much. The Nothing will make your ass pucker faster than a bolt of lightning hitting something <laughs> nearby. It's like, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, there's the sonic. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no way to really tell it's coming or they're like, oh, I hope the lightning doesn't strike. Boom! Boom! Boom. Yeah. You're just like, good god. Yeah. I, uh, uh, what's the next power movie, of Nick? the gods? Thor. Brooman donated five dollars and said some fun with Warhammer bits. Hope you guys are doing well. Woo! Thank you, Brooman. All right, well, behold the gate of Burkate. Your final trials and aspirin to the red. The old mister's no return save as one word to belong to the wounds and body and soul. Aye. Poor priest, what shall I expect of this trial? Alright, here's what will happen. You listen and let me. Alright, so here's what's going to happen. You walk through this archway, the squid will scream at you, and if you get a boner, we're killing you. <laughs> what? <laughs> if you get a boner. What is it you don't understand? What is it you don't understand there, lad? Nay, nee. nee. we so deep in the eggs? Because, because these games. 
Bolton is over the way like a thrown well plot. No, seriously, I don't understand. You will have to throw it into the fire pit so the demons can consume your soul. Sorry, what? Get in there! <laughs> Father willing. You just have to not get a boner. I'm like, okay, don't get a boner. What? Don't get a boner. Man, that's a sexy squid. Okay, don't get a boner. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. What kind of squid are you? I'm sorry, but this isn't Japan. <laughs> yeah. I'm not into that kind of shit. All right. Explosions. Hey, more, Nick? All right. Uh, Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Well, um, let's see. Oh, uh, <clears throat> speaking of Warhammer, <clears throat> the uh, Angels of Death trailer is out, and uh, damn, you gotta say, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. If you have a chance to check I it out. I haven't, I haven't seen it. What is it? Okay. Uh, it's a... Genre, it, at least. Uh, it's action, a animated. Go yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, you're getting a little bit of an early preview. Uh, Nick and I's reaction uh, will be up probably either tomorrow or the day after. All depending on how it's things an angel, go. It's called Angels of Death. Yes. Now, is this the uh, s series that we kind of started? The guy that puts out the um, the little films? The dude that made... Uh, a Star Tis. Reach, which me and Nate have been watching. No. It's like black and white animated one that oh, okay. is on this team. A Startes is a different guy. Okay, that's, it, that's one I was thinking of. I was which, like, those are really good. Which actually, a Startes, there was actually some drama with it. Uh, the guy actually had his cha had the channel hacked. Is that the oh, dude that no. kind of like he when he, the the Warhammer stuff, the Startes, right? He's the one that like narrates it in like that like very professional type way and does it in a very like a slow kind. Oh um, no. Like, no, 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 no! This no, is no. like a um, a uh, CG filmmaker. Oh, oh. Uh, and the Astartes one, if you ever have a chance to check it out, do it, man. They're Warhammer the short best. films, and it's some awesome. of the best like CG I've ever seen. Okay, I was thinking about the guy that does all the Warhammer lore. Yeah, here we are, Angel of the Death teaser trailer. Heck yeah! This is CG, by the way. All this. This is Captain Salkin of the Blood Angel Strike Cruiser Sword of Bar. Respond. Without darkness, there can be no light. As like a, a fan made kind of film. Oh no, this is officially being done by the Games Workshop. Oh, sure. They're paying the guy who did Hell's Reach to do this. <laughs> Pretty interesting. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, actually, if you want to go ahead and show uh, Roan like Astartes one through four, just for the hell of it yeah, too, because they're, really they're really short. They're really good, man. Really freaking good. Yeah, because there's one that's like literally all four of them together. <coughs> God, I keep thinking back to like a. When I first heard about Warhammer, and I I saw the game on the shelves a while back, and just how in like batshit insane it was, mm. the chainsaw sword, the bolters, and everything. I, I remember playing the RTS. That was the only Warhammer because I was like StarCraft, and then Warhammer came yeah, out. Yeah, here it is. A start is. This CG is like top of the line, and it's one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, look at the lights. Look at the uh, look at the lighting. Look at the uh, like character models. Look at oh god, <laughs> love it so much. Incoming. <laughs> <laughs> Just burn it all down. That's one way to make an entrance. So hello. Yes, hello. You will die now. Imagine nine, like ten foot tall behemoths with superhuman aim, strength, and like uncanny, unnatural abilities, just like, like laying waste to everything you ever known. Mm -hmm. Friggin' bolters. <coughs> I got damn thirty millimeter. They actually talked about how big the bullets in the net and the bolters are. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> They're like point nine six zeros. They're gargantuan. <laughs> Big knife to the chest. Nine six zero what? Caliber. Oh. That's not that big, is that point nine six zero? Fifty cal. Okay. Like fifty cal? Oh so, yeah, so it's times like a, two. Okay. It's like a twenty. But that's a handgun. It's like a twenty five millimeter. Yeah, but they're talking about their pistols. Oh, okay. Using. That's yeah, their the pistols. Yeah, not, okay. yeah, yeah. not the heavy artillery. That's their pistols and their pistols. and their assault like basic assault weapons. Small guns would have like a cartridge like as big as. So it's like it's like firing a pistol with like a forty millimeter grenade. In it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yes. And here we are, the final part. This was the last part that was released here recently. It's like Marines with a Viking mentality. Except they're Space Marines. Space Marines. Ultimate light shield. <laughs> oh, almost. Psionic powers or something? Yeah. Oh, right through the head. Rip. Mission successful. Good job, brother. And to this day, still, 
even after all this, we still don't know what's in the fucking vault. Yeah, and I open up the <laughs> vault, and here comes Mew from Elfin, uh, Elfin Lead. It's like, <laughs> boom! Oh! Lock it back up! What have we done? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just conk her over the head, and she's like, Mew! Mew! <laughs> Mew! Mew! God, emergency. Like, what's saying Mew, conk? No, 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 no. Go back to saying yeah. Mew. Go, go back to, uh, to sweet and kind and nice, not and psychopathic. Cuddly. Please, <laughs> God. Oh, for God's sake, please. <laughs> Just the opening to that is so fucking brutal. Like, dude, that whole the show The one dude is like, is, like, up against the wall, like, terrified, and uh. she just, like, waves her hand or whatever. His head just just fucking head rolls hurts. off. Well, it's like the girl, the intern, comes up there with the coffee and spills and yeah. comes up, and she just wrenches her head around backwards oh, and rips God. it off. Like, God, that was so brutal. Yeah. That whole, uh, that whole show is very sad, well, depressing, yeah. and brutal. Elvin Lead, uh, Elvin Lead, and uh, friggin' uh, Akira have some of the most brutal deaths. Hmm. Some of those, like for me, uh, the one in, in Akira where uh, where Tetsuo is uh, standing there and he's uh, he's having like a, a psychic break where his like his mind is like he doesn't know what to believe or anything like that. And these doctors come up to try and help him, and he, like, has, like, a, like, where the wave comes out. He's like, Wah! and then as soon as he does that, literally all four people who are trying to help him are just, like, paced on the wall. And, you like, you see, like, all around him, it's nothing but clear within a certain vicinity of him, and then everything else around him is just blood. Mm. Just, just does the same thing. Yeah. yeah. You know who is a human? You know who is a human? People like you! Everyone fucking explodes all over the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all that, yeah, when the the kids, which those are, those kids probably needed to die. Yeah, the ones they, that killed the dog. Yeah, like, those, yeah, bastards, they, they, those bastards deserve that shit. No sympathy for yeah. those kids No, nope, done. Yeah, those little bastards, if I had been in that room, when they had the dog pinned on the ground, I'd have picked every single one of them up and just chucked them at her feet and I said, grab them do by as their you feet. please. By their feet. Do as you please. Swung them till their heads hit the damn concrete. Well, I mean, it's like, it's like that. It's like seeing that scene makes the whole reason like having watching John Wick snap over somebody oh, oh yeah dude like, yeah. Like, well yeah. you see John John like everyone's just like oh god he's killing him over a dog it's like have you ever loved a dog <laughs> have you ever like dedicated time out of your life to take care of this animal that loves you back unconditionally no matter what so I found out something I think I already told you this in the script of John Wick we had to use this like an example on our plots in school mm -hmm. did you know the script of John Wick he is 63 years old yes you like, told me that yeah I mean I thought he was like in his mid 40s and everything but no like he's 63 years old so he don't give a shit no more <laughs> he's just like what what's up Nick Union donates all the time you want to give him a five minute video sure Yeah, we'll do this and then we'll probably call it because we're at a uh, hour and twenty five minutes right now. So this will probably uh, put yeah, us right at the limit, late. if not over. A little over. late tonight. Yeah, a little late because you know. Well, we got started a little late. Setup. Yeah, we did the TV setup plus uh, you know a little bit oversleeping. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nick? Is there visuals or is it Does it's not showing up, no. It's just a black video. Oh, oh there, there it goes. goes. Alright, we're good, the we're following good. Following content is completely fan made. Made, made by, by one, one person. person. Uno Talmich. So the machine god surrounds the power of the machine god invests the power of the machine god drives the power of the god endows with life. Live. This is Warhammer? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Fan film. Now, what is the machine race called? I, I forget. Machine? I can't remember that. I'm Our terrible with names. I'd love to have subtitles on.
A, who would want to ever talk like that? And B, who would ever want to listen to somebody talk like that? That's I don't know. aggravating as shit. Well, it, that's why I say I wish they had subtitles on this. So I can Imagine understand. if he was the boss bitching at you. We he probably need more is. productivity. Get to work. So he's a machine himself, I'll take it. He is Skynet. Sentient machines. Edie, pretty much. Except I actually like Edie, like, talking. I can understand her fully. <clears throat> this is no slight against, like, the lore of this. It's just I really wish I could understand the guy better. Yeah. I just see the cool factory. Oh, yeah. The this visuals is, is nice. It's, visuals like, is beautiful. it's like trying to listen to t somebody talk through water. <laughs> kind of like like somebody took the audio and then took like a sheet of aluminum and like you know, wait, you know how when you wave Blast, it blasted it, cool it on the it? yeah <laughs> very metal but definitely um, industrial as in like machine industrial sounding that fits with the this, fits yeah. yeah but it's just you need to make it easier to understand it's just like I'm sure Bane would have been a much more like better villain if it wasn't for the fact that he was turned into a meme for the. Listen, <laughs> this surface is yours. <laughs> you I thought Bane's. I thought Bane sounded really awesome. Though. Molded by it. Molded by it. That's a big gun. That's a big machine. Oh, I think it's one of those walking cities. Hmm. Adeptus Mechanicus. That's a, blender, a lot of animation. Yeah, blender, Double blender. Adobe. Yeah. A whole lot of blender. <laughs> Audacity for the voices. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Couldn't understand the word, half the words he was saying, but yeah. Yeah, he says in the for top comment to turn on subtitles, which you can't do with media shares. So. Yeah. All right. Well, shit. Subtitles. Mm, get He's basically talking about like the the forge that they have there and the machine god and how he's uh, made this efficient thing. And, um, But it can be killed by like six thousand other things. In the, this it was the year right? twenty X. The part I'm on, he's talking about um, as they see the beauty of our Omnisaya manifested as this marvelous and colossal artwork of war. And then the birth of Mega Man X comes and it <laughs> destroys them all to shit. Poor Sigma keeps just, coming I, back yeah, every I have game. A time. I guess this is basically where they forged the Titans at those giant fuckers that we saw in Hell's Reach. Yeah. With love for the machine, we humans have granted these titans the blessing of life. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Damn. That's pretty <laughs> That's cool. Good stuff. I like machine. Where are you going? Four point five minutes have passed, and so I guess he's going to get on his ship. He said at the beginning it was four point five minutes until this transport will be ready or whatever. Yeah. Hmm. All right. What's uh? Hurry at another meme there. Two feet. Two feet. I need about two feet.
contact the Inquisition. It has the signature of Xenos technology. I found the Zerg. Or the Tyranids. An unknown artifact has been discovered by the Imperial Guard. The Inquisition was contacted to unveil its secrets and to banish it for eternity. After a long time of investigation, we have now discovered its true origin. And our worst expectations have come true. Nope, Tyranids. I knew it. Knew it had to be Tyranids. Oh, probably. Look like Diablo. El Diablo. But it looked pretty cool. El Diablo. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, any more memes, Nick? All right, well, Last meme of the day. I guess that's going to do it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. We need a lot of Warhammer stuff there at the it end. It mostly wasn't memes today. It's mostly Warhammer and cool stuff. Yeah, a yeah. Couple, couple memes. Well, that and that one horrifying, like, like, uh, uh, siren head. Yeah. That's what it was. It was like like a light pole, but it had the Whee! signs on there, but it walks. Mm. And it picks his head and says, peekaboo. Those were demons. Oh, demons. Okay. All right. Well, good. <clears throat> good to know. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's going to do it for uh, this rendition of uh, Renegade's Ramble. This, uh, once again, uh, thank you uh, once again for everyone tuning in. And uh, for those of you out there wanting to, uh, you know, submit memes in the future, y'all know what to do. I mean, but for now, we're going to have to wait until next week. So, uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's uh, you know, that's copyrighted. <clears throat> Same fat time, same fat. Actually, that one's, that one's like Kevin Smith's. I can't use that one. Same time. Same cat time, same cat channel. There yes. you go. Surely that's already did. Damn it. <laughs> How about just good night, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. I'm Nate. I'm Jacob. I'm Rogue. I'm Nick. And we'll see you in the next one, everybody. Peace.